Good morning folks and welcome to episode 7 of Badgers Angling. Um, today I'm going to be trying to record a live match. It's the first round of Willow Marsh Winter League. Um, I fish it every year, well I have done for the past sort of 5 years or so. Um, the temperature's dropped unfortunately, sort of 6 degrees at the minute it's saying in the van. Um, what sort of effect that's going to have on the fishing, who knows, but we'll have a go anyway. I'm just on my way up there now and I'll catch up with you when I'm there. Nice simple bait tray, point and a half of maggots, which I'm not planning on using unless it's rock hard to be honest. Some new fish got in here and they are uh, obviously being reared up on pellets, so that's the main plan of attack. Banded 4 mils, then if it's not very good I'll swap to uh, expanders. That's the plan anyway. Well then guys, here we go. As I said in the clip earlier, um, round one of Willow Marsh Winter League. Um, the temperature was around 6 degrees or so, which was a big change from the few days before. Um, which we all now can knock the fishing on its head a little bit. Um, but I was still optimistic, you know, that there's a some new fish been put in here. Um, some stocked um, carp of around a pound and a half to three pound. So I thought they might sort of have a go. So my main plan of attack as the line I'm feeding here was sort of 14 and a half metres with hard pellets. Um, just feeding a few four mils, fishing one in the band um, with a view to sort of change to expanders later if, if hard pellets weren't the way forward. Um, so I fed that one there. Um, I did feed a short line which you'll see me do in a sec. But I actually didn't end up... Um, going on it to be honest because I fed a line um, down to my right at 14 and a half metres in sort of three foot of water there's um there was a lovely shadow where I could see my float perfectly um, and that's where I sort of fished it would be sort of your short line but 14 and a half metres down the bank um, and I was planning to fish uh, micros and a bigger expander down there um, hopefully some bigger carp later on um, I started on Waggler as I pretty much always do when it's flat calm. I don't I don't like sort of crashing a, a feeder or a lead on top of the red. I just find waggler. You can sort of sneak it in um, and you can catch them all the way through the water. And that is my preferred way of catching them. You can't beat it seeing a waggler go under, can you? Um, so as I say, that's what I started on. A couple of maggots on the hook. Um, 16 Super LWG, Drennan Vizzy Wag, which I put a bit of lead wire on just to cock them so they don't take any shot other than the, the sort of micro swivel that I've been using as a, a dropper. Um, you'll see here I did get an indication um, quite quickly after about two or three minutes um, but I struck and there was nothing there. Um, there was a, a bit of a bow wave out the peg so I'm sure I just a carp would have brushed the line as such. Um, I did stick it out a little bit too long on this to be honest because after having that first indication I thought you know that there might be a nest of carp out there so I did give it as you'll see in the next next few clips I did give it maybe three or four casts um, which was only over sort of half an hour though um, and then I dropped on the pole which you'll see in the next clip along. So as I say, after about 30 minutes, I'm, uh, I'm going looking on the pole. Um, as I said earlier, just tapping in maybe four or five four mil hard pellets at a time. And then just a four mil pellet in the band, size 18, Super LWG, 13 or clink. Um, it's a fine line really, because these new stocked fish, obviously, are, are, and the F1s that are in here, they're, they're quite cute. So I didn't want to fish too too heavy but then there is some real big boys in here so I went for 013 and 18 or 13 Jura slip which in my opinion is the best all round elastic ever made um, and I had a bite pretty quickly after maybe two or three minutes um, as you'll see there straight into a fish um, played it carefully as you do with the first one it was the first bite actually and no one else had had a bite by the by the looks of what I could see anyway. Um, I just wanted to make sure I'd go in the net, to be fair. I thought it was going to be a really tough day with the sun out and flat calm. It dropped cold, you know.
there we go, back onto the top kit. Um, and it turned out that it was one of the uh, one of the lovely F ones that reside in Dragonfly. Their uh, the line had just wrapped round him. They were they're about two and a half to three pound these fish. Um, they've been in there a few years now, but because they've been knocking about with carp, they uh, I think in the summer they've been eating eight mil pellets and this stuff, and they've been uh, really really packing on the weight. So again, just repeated the process, um, add a bite very quickly, so I thought why change, um, straight back out with a banded 4mm. Again, just maybe, well I put a few more in the pot just so I could get two feeds out of it if I needed to, without, without sort of shipping back really. It's great when it's flat calm, because you can have your float dotted down, so you know like a like a dimple really um, and any sort of movement on the float because those stockies the bites were really really uh quite tentative really considering they've not really been caught before um they were really shy biting so again just out to the mark 14 and a half meters turning the pole over maybe four or five pellets and then just sat and waited for a bite, a bit of lifting and dropping, um, laying the rig out. And like I said, just a bit of lift, lifting and dropping after laying the rig in. Um, sat there for a couple of minutes. Um, and then I didn't get nothing on that feed, so I came back in, um, put, a, put a new hard pellet on. Um, and I was starting to think maybe I should have tried an expander, um, but I thought I'll give it one more last go on the hard pellets, just to. So I always like to catch on hard pellets if you can. Um, just find the bites are, uh, you know, really fast, and you you can very rarely miss them because you're using sort of a hair rig bait. The hook just flies in. That's what I've been doing a lot all summer to be honest when I've been match fishing I've got real real confidence in in fishing hard pellets you know whether it's up in the water or on the deck just again repeating the process four or five pellets um, tapping a few and making a little bit of noise lifting the rig out of the way laying it in holding a tight line and then just letting it settle over the top of those pellets so as I said I decided to give it one more go on the hard pellets um, but it did seem that it was quite slow and I was very quickly thinking about changing to soft ones um, did hook another fish shortly which as you'll see from the footage the way it sort of roars off was how it looked you can always tell the way they zoom off can't you when uh, when they're how looked I cut the little bit of footage on this because I was playing it for quite some time and it was in the tail but another one in the bag That's one of the new ones. then I did quickly change to 4 mil expanders um, and then I changed the feed as well I started putting micros in a medium guru pot just half filling it um, sort of squashing it down with my thumb and just making it go down in a bit of a clump um, and fishing a four mil soft one over it, and that was that was when things started to get good. Really, I was I was getting regular bites now. Um, I'd got quite. I think I'd got four four F ones and four small carp, and everyone around me, the best I could see was sort of three three small one big carp, sorry, and two smaller carp. Um, so I weren't doing bad at all. So I was just plodding along. I was happy with that. Um, not rushing anything, not setting the world alight, but getting regular bites, which is more than you can hope for this time of year.
There we go, there's another little stocky. Um, they're really, really nice fish. Um, lovely, lovely markings on them. Lovely scale patterns and stuff. It might have been a big F1, that one, actually, by the looks of it. I did set up a, a bomb to fish um, bomb and corn with a pellet cone on it um, but as I said earlier because there was no ripple or no wind I just find a lot of the times that you're wasting your time on the lead unless you're on a serious nest of fish and they want to be hard on the bottom um, I'd much prefer to catch them on wag but because I was catching steady on this I didn't really need to pick any of my rods up to be honest after after catching those first few stockies I was just ticking away on this nicely um, putting a few fish in the net which I was more than happy with there was a few fish starting to uh, be caught around the lake now as well Glen on peg 15 on the dam wall he was um, he was getting a few bites long on the pole uh, the same kind of thing that I was doing and then Danny opposite me on peg 8 which is the old peg 12 on dragonfly on the point um, he was starting to get a few bites as well um, he had a lot of room there so I thought maybe he was one of the people that might catch me up um, and then Chris on the end peg on my bank he was also that's one of the shallower pegs and there was a few fish there as well he was getting steady bite sort of at this point in the match um, I would say we're about maybe halfway through now um, and I'd got maybe well I thought to be honest I'd got about fifty pound in the in the bag at the minute, but my weight at the end said otherwise I must have had a few more. So I'm just sitting waiting patiently on that formal expander again. Um, just on that little ball of micros that I put in. Just always having a look around. You, I can't help myself sometimes. You. You need to keep an eye on what's going on around you, but there you go, there's another little dink and uh, another little stocky or F1 on the end. I think this one was a stocky. Um, we'll see when it pops up in a sec. It's worth mentioning as well, I, I didn't manage to record everything that I, uh, that I hooked. I am just in the process, as you might have seen on my social media, of getting uh, my camera stuff up to speed. Um, I need some more batteries for my GoPros. I have got two GoPros now. One is much, much newer than the other. Um, but I do need some more batteries for them because when they run out, unfortunately, I have to recharge them on the bank, which is no good. Um, I have recently bought a new laptop as well, which is what I'm using now, and some brand new software. Um, this is my first go with it, so hopefully this turns out all right. Are they? Just worth mentioning about elastics as well. Um, as I said earlier, this 13 Jura slips, beautiful elastic. It's one of the best all rounders that I've found. Um, I was going to use the 11 Jura slip, which is the green which would be perfect for those stocky and F1s but I think if I'd have hooked some of the bigger carp that I did catch on this line on the 11 Jura slip that have had me all over the place I'd have took ages and ages to get them in um, that have been all over my peg um, so I just had to put up with sort of possi the possibility of bumping an odd stocky um, through the elastic being a touch too heavy um, 
But hopefully when I did up some of those bonus fish, I could get them out. And that was the case on the day. I did catch three carp on, on this long line on the uh, Formula Expander of my crows. Um, and I was only fishing sort of an 18 up. Um, so yeah, it was worth it in the end using the uh, the white jury slip. This bit here, I did... Um, this is right towards the end of the match now. Um, my camera ran out sort of an hour before this, to be honest, and I had to charge it. So this was the last bit of footage I could get. Um, there's about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes of the match left, I think. Um, and I just thought, it's really dried up on my long line. So I've, I had had a fish on my line down the bank, uh, maybe half hour before this. Um, which obviously as I said just my uh, my camera on out so I didn't get the footage um, but I thought last 10 minutes you know I thought I'd got more than enough anyway to to win the pool but I just thought I'd uh, see if I can catch a decent carp just to to top the weight up um, so I've just put some micros in a bigger pot there I'm fishing a slightly heavier hook link I'm fishing 015 hook link um, to a size 16 super LWG um, with a 6mm expander on this time and I was just sort of laying it down the shelf um, just dragging it up so everything was nice and tight waited about 5 or 6 minutes maybe no longer than that because you'll hear in a sec they did shout the all out just after I hooked the fish which is about now there you go Again, white jury slip down the edge for those bigger fish was absolutely perfect. I only had two down there, but they would have gone probably £20 between themselves. Um, so I've ended up with a, a lovely day's fishing, really. Um, like I say, I caught steady long on the expander mm -hmm. over my pros, starting on the four mils, hard, hard four mils. Swapping to the expander was a good call in the end. Um, kept the fish coming through the day. Um, like I say, in the middle I had a, a real steady spell where I just caught, you know, a stocky or an F1 every every sort of 10 to 20 minutes, you know, which is more than you can hope for, really. Other people were starting to catch on the lake as well. Um, Danny opposite me did actually end up with 60-odd pound. He caught a few fish down the edge later on. Did lose a few as well. Whether it had caught me up or not, I don't know. Um, I think the guy on 14 ended up with 50 odd pound. And then Chris on the end peg on my bank ended up with 50 odd pound as well. Um, which, you know, sort of first round of the Winter League. You can't moan at that, to be honest. This one did really give me the uh, the run around. It was after the whistle, and uh, I didn't think I needed him to to win the pool. But it's always nice in case you know, in case you get to the end of the league and it goes on weight. Um, you'd always like to get as many as you can in the in the keep, net, you know. Um, so I did take my time with this one. It did give me a right merry dance, to be honest. Like I say, on a only on like a sixteens hook. Um, so I played him carefully. You just can't rush these big fish. Um, you don't want to be pulling out of them at the night. There's nothing worse. <clears throat> I did have some maggots on my bait tray, as you will have seen. Um, I'd I didn't even put any in. Um, 
because I'd been catching on pellets um, and I saw some of the lads who had put maggots in they were getting uh, they were getting perched and uh, roached out you know they were catching some small silvers which I thought on the day you'd need carp to win as you usually do on this lake it's uh, it is predominantly carp F1 based with an odd tension stuff but I don't think you could ever catch enough silvers to compete with the carp sort of things. It was really cold by now as well. I'd been uh, in the shade for maybe the last couple of hours of the match. Um, you know, even though it was a winter's day, I would think opposite me where Danny was in the sun there, it would be uh, a few degrees warmer, certainly. I knew it was a proper fish. Uh, that's why I just took my time with it, even though, as I said, it did lead me a right merry dance, to be honest. It was after the whistle anyway, I'd got, I knew I'd got quite a few minutes to land it, so there was no point in uh, in rushing it and potentially uh, pulling out of it. I did have a quick stab at it there, which was a stupid thing to do, really, um, but luckily it didn't cost me. Well, he's close to going in the net though, thank God. And there we go, finally. <laughs> right, I might have to get in that one. But it was a proper lad. So now we come to the weigh-in. Um, Jim came to my peg and this was my net of smaller stocky fish and F1s. I think this net went £63.7. You'll probably hear Jim shout it out in a sec. Take a graph on your phone and send it, mate. Yeah, Easier. Yeah. Go have a little photo with your fishing, yeah? There we go. Fucking good that And then I've got my carp net out, which um, I've got five fish in this one. Um, the two I caught down the right hand bank, and then the three rogue ones that I caught on my uh, on my long sort of stocky line. Um, and these went nearly fifty pound. So five fish for nearly fifty pound, forty nine pound, and I think nine ounces, something like that. £49 something. You might hear Jim shout it up in a sec.
Again, another photo with the uh, with the five nice carb that I caught. I mean, that's the average stamp of the proper carp in Dragonfly. They are they are pretty big. I would say now, if you catch ten carp, you you've probably got hundred pound. As you've seen there, I've had five for nearly fifty. Um, there is some smaller ones in there, but I would say majority of them are, are sort of ten pound and upwards, really. Certainly eight pounds and upwards. So yeah, that was the end of the match. £112.14 and ounces. And now for the outro. Right then folks, just got home. Uh, it's got a bit better than I expected to be honest. I've not fished a uh, match in about three months. Um, so I was a little bit rusty at the start. Um, but it all came good in the end. Um, I've ended up weighing £112 an ounces which has won the match with 60 odd pound seconds so I'm really really chuffed with that and a great start to the league one point couldn't have asked for any better really and nice little uh, nice little pick up in the pocket um, hope you enjoyed it guys and I'll catch you again soon